So the way it all ended was Greg at the at the end of the war, okay, his dementia was setting in and he wasn't making good decisions. His son, Joe, Joey, who's my godson, I stood up for him at confirmation, winds up getting into drug business, okay? Uh, and I'll backpedal that a little bit and tell you how we all how the, the club went downhill. But Joey was now in the drug business. And I guess there was a corner that he claimed was his and somebody else was selling there. So he went with a baseball bat. The guy pulls out a gun. So he leaves. He comes back to the house. He tells his father. His father calls me. I was home. It takes me five minutes, eight minutes to get there, depending on lights, you know, in Brooklyn. I drive to the house, and he tells me what happened. So I said, all right, I know the kid, Mike. I'll go talk to him. I know who he's talking about. We go to the corner. He's not there anymore. He probably knew something was coming. But before we go, Joey has a gun. I took the gun from him. I put it in the, in the glove compartment, and I locked it. I said, we're not going to kill the kid. Mm-hmm. Okay, your father asked me to talk to him and straighten this out. So this kid was I'm becoming a little nutty. He wanted to be like, like his father, you know. Yeah, he's got that complex. Misled to be, right, to be the Grim Reaper. So we go looking. 15, 20 minutes, he's not around. I said, let's, let's, let's go home. I go back. I tell Greg, I says, I think it's best anyway. I said, let everybody cool down. We'll find them tomorrow. Cool the heads. He agreed with me. He says, yeah, that, 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 right. I think you're right. I go home. I'm not home one minute. I don't have my clothes on. I'm getting ready to get on. And my, the phone rings, and it's Linda screaming on the phone, panicking like, like a lunatic. She thinks Joey got killed. Greg shot. She just must. So I'll be right there. She's telling me she needs me. Come over, come over, please. I get in the car, I drive back. On the way, I pass the block where this kid lives. There's unmarked cars, there's police cars, ambulances, fire department. I mean, it's a crime scene. I go around the long way, go to the house. I get to the house. The car that I was in has bullet holes all over it. Joey's friend, who was who was in the car with me also, with Joe, he was sitting in the back. Joey was sitting next to me, is in the back seat, gasping, trying to get a breath of life. Every once in a while, I hear, <laughs> he's dying. I go upstairs into the house. Greg is on the phone. He has a scotch in front of him. He's got a towel. He got his eye shot out, okay? And he's telling the parole people, because we were already, uh, he was arrested, and was given bail, which is the biggest, the biggest farce in the history of mankind because no mob guys get bail. Nobody. They gave him bail, and he had the bracelet on. So they were calling this as the, your alarm went off. You were further than 50 feet from your house. And he's denying it. He's, no, nah, I never left. I've been here the whole time. Now I got to bring him to the hospital, okay? What do you mean when you say he got his eye shot out? Oh, he went there. With Joey. Joey was probably still breaking his chops. We got to get this guy. We yeah. can't let him do this. He pulled a gun on me. And probably, I, I knew he used to get under his father's skin. He said, all right, you want to kill him? Let's go fucking do it. You know, just like that. Just let's go. So he goes. They were waiting. They were in front of the house. And there's about eight guys. As soon as Greg gets out, he starts shooting. They all shot. They opened up and shot. This kid's in the back seat. He gets hit in the head. Joey runs. He runs in the driveway. I heard a kid hit him in a garbage pail or something. So he wound up surviving. And the father gets his eye shot out. So I got to bring him to the hospital. There's four or five hospitals in Brooklyn that I could bring him to. He insists on going to the hospital that saved him, Mount Sinai in Manhattan. So I got to go through toll boots with cops. It's the days when the cops manned them at the tunnels. I got to drive through Manhattan with this guy dying in the car. And I do it. I'm so I was loyal to a fault back then. Oh, the kid's still in the back seat? No, no, no. Okay. We took him I took him in my car. Greg, okay. big Greg. He's got a guy, he's gonna die, he's gonna bleed to death. Right. So I walk into the hospital with him and the nurse comes and she says, Oh my god, what happened? I said he fell in the yard. I think a pipe went in his eye. <laughs> so she wheels him in the they wheel him in the back, they put him on the gurney, they wheel him in the room. She gives me paperwork to fill out. She comes back out. She says, you stay right here. I know she saw a bullet. So when she walks away, I go to the door. I open it. I says, Greg, I got to go. 
He's laying there like this. He goes like this to me. Thumbs up. That's the last time I seen him in the free world. Really? Yeah. That was the last year because now they locked him up and they, he couldn't get bail again. And they had to leave him in Rikers Island for a while, which is a jungle. But they had the best AIDS unit because of all the junkies in there. Mm. And a few months later, I got arrested. Uh, you know, uh, they just rounded everybody up from the war. They had guys talking. Uh, four or five guys flipped. Carmine Sessa, our consulier, the first one to flip. And call a big meeting, and at that meeting, everybody got arrested, except him. So I mean, that's a, the treachery and the backstabbing is. There's no, there's no parameters. It's just, it's uh, uh, mind-boggling. How the fuck did he survive getting shot in the eye with AIDS and everything? Yep, yeah. And then the, the it, bullet, like what? what well, what, here's what happened. Here's what they said. It didn't go in this way. Okay. It must have deflected off the car and went in this way. Oh. So it didn't penetrate deep into the brain. Okay. Right. Yeah. So. What a, yeah. lu- a lucky yeah, well, and lucky, unlucky. Yeah, well, exactly. Exactly. So, but he was running out of his nine lives. You know, the AIDS was going to eventually, now being in prison, he was certainly not going to, you know, survive. You don't get good medical attention in there. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to call people rats and things like that. But I always say there's a lot of different ways to break that rule. Okay. Some guys uh, cop out and admit things that are hurting the next wave of defendants that happened on my case where guys came in they admitted there was a war they admitted they were part of the colombo family they don't have to prove that anymore these guys just admitted it so that becomes evidence against you okay but they got their reasonable deal and they were happy uh john Gotti talking on the tapes the way he did and being flamboyant and being in the public eye the way he was all the time that's not a good thing mm-hmm. you know uh, and then other guys do it like my boss did. The smartest way of all, just be partners with an FBI agent your whole career. You'll never get arrested. And that's what happened with him. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he sold his own son out, Greg Jr., who I'm uh, still very friendly with. Uh, he did 33 years, Greg Jr. And when the father died, uh, he did a deathbed confession. And he saved other people. He didn't put me or his son as part of the deathbed confession, exonerating us. So this, yeah, and he, uh, yeah, it's, it's. And is there stuff that he could have said that would have exonerated of course. you? He could have said that uh, all I did was drive him places. He was my driver. He didn't know anything about the hits. It's what he did for Alley Boy Persico, uh, who was the boss of the big boss of the family, Carmine Persico's son. And while I was away. Alley Boy told me that him and his father knew about Greg for the last 20 years. So Knew about him talking to the FBI. Yes, I knew that he was, yeah, yeah. And then I found out later on there was an actual case uh, from one of the attorneys on our case that I, I'm friends with now way after. There was a, a very big tax indictment, okay? And about eight of the guys, heavyweights in the family, were all indicted. Greg was one of them. So they all show up to the first arraignment. And it gets delayed. You know, they always put it off for for weeks. They come back to the next one. They're all there except Greg. They have to delay it again. A few weeks later, they show up again. No Greg. The fourth time, they show up. No Greg. They throw the case out. Okay, so those guys, Junior Persico was on that case. So he had to know something. But either he felt he helped us. So what's the problem? Right. Plus, they knew he could kill without having a problem. Right. They're never going to arrest him. So they had him doing a lot of work over the years. Plus, he was an enormous earner. So all those things, mm. they they gave him a pass for having a uh, being partners with a, uh, an FBI agent.